be freaking nice. That's the best advice that I can give you. You want to be a better dancer? Be nice to anybody. Because being nice, at the moment that you start dancing, you can be a badass dancer, but you have an attitude. And the first thing that the girl is going to be like, wow, such a good dancer. And he sucks. He's so arrogant or this. The best from the moment that you're nice, you improve already your dance and your personality and everything. From that moment, the people, they're going to start liking you. From the moment that I think... Hey, hey. <laughs> so I am now on the line with a Mr. Luis Vasquez, who is a dance instructor, choreographer, as well as an artist. You were born in Guadalajara, Mexico, and you have appeared in many TV shows as well as movies and music videos. Um, you've also worked with some amazing music artists as well. Uh, you moved to Sweden in 2010, where you and your partner run the Love Dance Academy, which is one of the largest Latin dance schools organ and organizers in Sweden. Is that correct? Not in Sweden, but uh, in uh, in the south of Sweden. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Excuse me. Excuse me. All right. How you, how were you doing today, Mr. Vasquez? I'm fine, brother. Thank you so much. I'm fine. Just resting, and I'm happy to see you and to be able to talk to you after hey. struggling with the sound before. <laughs> <laughs> it was a struggle, man. It was, man. I, I do want to say, man, um, you know, thank you so much, Luis, man, for taking time with you to talk to you, man. Not no problem, man. My hey, pleasure. awesome. So, I guess, man, to start this out, man, I'm very curious to hear from you, man. Um, You know, what was your childhood like growing up in Guadalajara, man? What was that like for you? Wow, uh, amazing. I mean, I, I have some of the best memories in my life as a child, you know. Growing up, playing on the street, uh, you mean having so many friends, not so many people, not not so many of the kids now, they don't play on the street, you know, they are more into iPads and uh, phones and all that, you know, and uh, so it was beautiful, just uh, the memories that I have, even I was uh, poor and everything, I was really poor as a little kid, but I was rich in another way, you know, and uh, with friends and family and and family or orientation and everything. So I have the best memories as a kid. Even I have some, a few bad ones when it comes like not able to eat uh, sometimes for one day or two days, sometimes, but, um, but everything else, it was amazing. I mean, see if I was able to reborn again, uh, I would love to, to go back into that childhood, you know, as it was amazing. And I understand it, man. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious, man. Um, you know, I guess, do you remember, you know, what were some of your childhood hobbies? You know, what did you enjoy doing as a child in Guadalajara? Well, um, first thing is I was uh, going to school like every other kid, you know. Uh, it was wake up in the morning. Well, the funniest thing, I was used to go to school in the evening. Because at that time, uh, there was too many kids and not too many school, uh, schools at that moment, at that time, you know. So they used the same school in the morning for the evening to put some other kids because uh, the capacity, you know, <laughs> let's say if it was for 200 kids or 400 kids, they have 800 or 1,000. So they have to use the school in the evening so I would used to go like from um, 5 p.m. until almost 10 p.m., you know, and then I would I would used to sleep in the morning, wake up, do some other stuff. And until now, I, I still do the same. You know, I cannot go to sleep early. I have to go to sleep really late. You know, because um, I'm a vampire, you know, so, but it was really <laughs> nice. I would, I would used to just play and and um, be, you know, a child. It means a kid, you know. I was dancing. I got into break dancing, you know, when I was um, like eight or nine years old. Because at that moment, it was really popular. The first movie uh, that it was break dancing, you know, uh, break dance. It's, it's, it was the first movie ever 
that it choreographed uh, Tony Basso. Tony Basso is the first girl who gave the opportunity to the first break dancers ever in history. Ozzy and all those, they, they, they're in the movie. A revolution of break dancing is there because of that movie. And Tony Basso is an old lady now that uh, she was a singer. You know the song, oh, Mickey, you're so fine, you're so fine, you blow my mind. And Mickey, yeah. Well, that girl is a break dancer and everything. She got into hip hop and all that. And she's the first one who gave the opportunity. She's a big dance choreographer in Hollywood. So after I became popular and everything, she became my, my student. And I was teaching her private lessons in, in Hollywood. And that's the way that I knew who she was. After she showed me, I was like, wow. And she told me the story and then I watched movies. And I was like, oh, damn. So she got me uh, many, many, many jobs in Hollywood and movies and choreographing for TV commercials and things like that because of my work agency at that moment. Because over there, to be a dancer, you need to go and now this to have an agency you know and if they accept you you're good they uh, they you become part of the of the of the group you can say and then you start getting job auditions and everything and she's the one who gave me the opportunity uh, to become um, part of the of that um, company you can call it you know and uh, and I got a lot of jobs because of that but anyway so I break dance when I was a little kid and I was always into music because of my mom my my brothers my older brother my older sister they were so much into dancing uh, at that moment it was the disco and all that and I would just see my older brother Arturo and my older sister Leti and they were already competing in Mexico and winning some competitions, a little bit of money, things like that. And, you know, as a little brother, you see them and you want to become like them somehow. So my whole family danced somehow. And, and that's the way that I got involved into dancing more, you know, little by little. I started with break dancing. I went into house music, uh, typical uh, folkloric dances from Mexico. Then I was in America and I got into a little bit of hip hop. And, and after that, I finished dancing salsa, you know, so that was what uh, really changed my life, dancing salsa. I understand that, man. I'm very curious, you know, you kind of spoke on, you know, I guess the the music scene in Guadalajara, man. I'm very curious, man, Um, you know, what was Guadalajara like for you growing up, man? What was that city like? Oh, it's beautiful. It's the second biggest city in Mexico. The first one is uh, Mexico City. There is over 24 million people. Um, I think it's one of the biggest or the second one in the whole world, you know. And then it's from Mexico. The second biggest city is Guadalajara, where I'm from, with uh, almost 9 million people or something like that. And um, it's a beautiful city. That's where it's coming from, the tequila. You know, if you drink tequila, if you wear big sombreros, it means nobody wear, almost nobody wears them there because it's a city. But... If you watch movies from the old times, that's what it was representing Jalisco, that is the, 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 the state, you know, of, uh, of Guadalajara. And uh, all that uh, region and so on is uh, very popular because of the tequila, the mariachi, the Miss Universe, you know, the last Miss Universe that we got is from Guadalajara, 2010, we became Miss Universe. And uh, we're re really recognized because um, of different uh, typical plates of food, like birria, um, tortas ahogadas, um, enchiladas, all those things are really popular from Guadalajara, at least, you know? So it's a really beautiful city. Uh, even right now, <laughs> we have the biggest cartels in Sinaloa, is, is Jalisco, and um, has been affecting somehow, you know, uh, the Mexico image, you know. Uh, plus, we have the most popular soccer team in Mexico. That is Guadalajara. That is Chivas. They, even they create a, but now it's not anymore. Chivas USA. That was in America. But it was only for eight or ten years, and then it disappeared. Uh, but it's one of the most famous uh, soccer teams because we play only Mexicans. In the other teams. Like in uh, MLS in America, they have players from all over the world. In this team, we allowed only Mexicans. There's because uh, they were discriminated before uh, when the 
English people came from England and from Spain and everything. They were used to play soccer. They're the ones who brought the football to Mexico, but they didn't allow the Mexicans to play with them, you know? So the Mexicans, the workers, they create this um, football team uh, almost, 100, almost 120 years ago. And they create this team that it became so popular. They say, okay, they don't want to play with us. They were Mexicans. Now we're going to create our own team and it's going to be only Mexicans. And they became the most famous team until now that they played with America. They are the most famous teams in Mexico and that is from Guadalajara. It's cool. It means when you talk to Mexicans, they know about all these things, you know? So, so that's Guadalajara, man. That, that's Guadalajara. <laughs> let, me, uh, let me ask you this one, very curious. Hey, kid, come here. Hey, if you could like and subscribe for the channel, that'd be amazing. Let's get back to let the show. Me, uh, let me ask you this one. I'm very curious to hear from you. You kind of already spoke on it, man, but I'm very curious to hear, man. How important was music growing up in your household? Oh, very important. It was very important, the music in my house. I think I'm, uh, I see it now that I travel so much all over the world. I notice that in the places that they have a lot of po pro uh, poverty or they have a lot of um, um, ghetto places, you can call it, you know, and, uh, there's music because that's what it, it keeps you alive somehow. Music is, um, is medicine, man, for the soul. The same way that it can make you feel sadness and everything, it can bring you happiness and it can make you forget about problems and everything dancing is the same you know and like you a lot of the students they come not just to learn but just to socialize a little bit to lose a little bit of weight to uh, be able to talk to someone to touch someone there's people like that and so music is is like that in my family my mom like i told you we were used to struggle with money and everything but being able to to listen to music my mom always wake up and the first thing we woke up with music and it was a way of waking up already, not thinking of, damn, I don't know if I'm going to eat. It was already with a good mood, you know, and somehow the day goes better. And uh, so music is in my family. Is, and I think all over the world, most of the people, is part of their, of their life, of the culture, of the, of the society. Of, uh, it's, I can call it food, for the, food for, the, for the soul, you know, so... No, I understand, man. I definitely understand that. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm very curious, man. Um, if you don't mind me asking, man, you know, I guess what, what did your parents do? Can I ask you that? Well, my father was um, was working in different um, uh, jobs, you know, during the the years. Uh, right now, he's retired. He's uh, seventy eight years old. My mom is seventy five. Um, he was used to work in a car dealer company and then she went to a taxi driver she was uh, he was driving his own taxi in mexico that's when he retired you know my mother is it was working on uh, different jobs because um, it was really tough at that moment we, i come from a family where 12 brothers and sisters where seven sisters and five brothers so it was tough uh, for my mom so she had to work in different jobs so she did some um, even she opened her own in Mexico is now is not so popular still but not like before but you were you were able to open a restaurant it, in your house you know let's say if you have a big garage or something you open and uh and put tables and everything and you just get a permission from the government it was really cheap and you open and you can sell different mexican food or let's say juices and uh, shake meal you know milkshakes and blah 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 so my mom did that to make some money and then she was used to work in the evening to uh, take care of uh, it's money she had so many kids and she was taking care of other people's kids sometimes to make money and my older sisters they were taking of us you know it's a way of surviving, man, you know? So it was like that. But uh, now they are retired. But the person who really inspired the whole family to dance, it was my mom. My, my father doesn't dance at all. He's like, stick, you know? And I, but my mom is, poof, 
she, until now she danced. She goes on the table and like, wow, come on, you're 75 years old. Go down and she moves it. She has so much energy. Hey. Everybody thinks that she's like 60 years old, you know? I'm like, wow, she looks amazing. Hey. Uh, so let me ask you this, man. You said, you know, you grew up in a household of 12, man. And, you know, with your parents. Yeah. And are your parents from Guadalajara as well? Yes. Okay. Well, so I'm very curious to hear, man, you know, what was it like growing up in that household, man? Oh, it was amazing. It means, come on, man. If you grow up, one of the things that I learned is families. There's nothing more important than family, you know? Uh, it's the only people that you can count on 100% with your eyes closed. It means uh, if you grow up with a good family, because I know some some people that they hate each other, brothers with another brother, you know? brothers and sisters, it means some of them, they don't even like their, their mom or their daddies, you know, it's, it's really amazing. But uh, almost all over the world, when I've been traveling, what is the most important in every country that I've been traveling, the people who survive the most, and in history, the way, you know, we build this society all over the world is because at that moment, we were really taking care of, of the family. Everything was family. You know, now a lot of the people that grew up more being singles and uh, believing in marriage and and I, they don't have to get married, but now I live in Europe, I live in Sweden, and in some places like in Italy and everything, the, the guys they don't want to have kids anymore. So you get to 50 or so and you've never been married, you never, you don't have kids, you know. So a lot of the new generations are dying. So they say that in the next 50 years, there's not going to be a new generation in Italy. And the new generation that is coming is coming from mixed with the immigrants. Like my brother lives there. I have hundreds of friends there from different nationalities. They are the ones who have babies with the Italians. So now it's mixed. But the new generation, like to say, it is coming from the Italians. There's not many. Then uh, Everything is changing. But not just in Italy. In some other places too, you know. It's, uh, for a lot of the people, they everything became more business, business. And you get to a point that you're 40, 50 years old, and then you realize that you don't have kids and everything. And it doesn't matter how well you you are, how much money you have. At the end, you're going to die alone. And, you you know, you're never going to procreate a, or continue with a new generation, you know. And that happened to one of my friends that he's, uh, she's a dancer. And now she's 43 years old. She can have babies. And now she regret when she was younger not to be, not to take the opportunity to be, you know, she was in love, but she preferred the dancing world. And now she knows that the dancing is not going to be there forever. But then that's it. And her mom, she have uh, only her. So it means there's no new generation. That's it. It's gone. You know, that sucks I, in a way. I, I understand that, man. I definitely do, man. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, so, you know, you're speaking about your childhood and everything, man. And you already kind of spoke on it. You know, you started with... Um, you know, I guess b-boying or you know, kind of hip hop dance, and then you kind of transition in other styles. You you said your mother is the, kind of the influence of the family for dancing. Yes, she would just to sing, in, um like a music group. You know, she uh -huh. was used to sing when she was younger. Then she met my father. She got in love. They got married, and then she stopped. But uh, she was always dancing. I remember when I was a little kid, she would just to take us to the parties. You know, the name the in Mexico, even until now, you know all your neighbors, you know what I mean? So it's not like uh, I live here in Sweden, you don't know the neighbors. It means you know them, but almost you never talk and everything. It's a, a completely different people. You um, Over there, you say hi, it means the neighbors, they can take care of, of, of the neighbor's kids. You know, like my mom, sometimes she would have to go somewhere and she let the, the person next to our house, ah, Mrs. whatever, Maria. Can you take care of my kids? I'm going for an hour. Oh, yeah, sure. And then we were used to do the same for, for the, the other person's kids, you know? So um, uh, my mom always was going to the parties of the neighbors. That there was almost every week there was a party somewhere. And he was used to take, she was used to take us with, with her, sometimes four or five kids. I still remember even one time she was sitting in a party and a guy came and asked my mom to dance. And she was like, yeah, sure. So she stood up. 
And when she stand up, another four or five of, of us, the kids, we stand up and we were dancing around. And the guy was looking around like, what the heck is that? <laughs> you know, because my mom started having kids when she was really, she was really young. She was 15 or 16. No, 16 years old when she had the first one. You know, so imagine, um, I still remember that. So, But my mom always somehow was dancing, singing. So in my, in my house, we sing, we dance, you know. It's because of her. Nice, man. I believe I read you started dancing around like the age of nine, man. So I guess I'm very curious, man, to hear like, you know, what, if you even remember, man, what was your beginner stage like in dancing? What was that like for you? Uh, well, like I told you, when I started dancing, it was more because you see other people doing it. At that moment, it was break dancing, you know, because of the mo uh, the movie really changed the you can call it a hip hop scene in in that at that time, you know, and uh, and the only way the people was were like getting inspired and every, and everything it was because of movies, you know. Later it was the Michael Jackson videos and all that because there was no internet, there was no no no, no nothing to share. There was no way to communicate with another person and and rush and other. So the only way was movies, the movies. So you used to go to see the movie, and when I saw that. I, I got into it because I saw my friends dancing. I was like, shit, I need to. And there were like bottles. Uh, at that moment, we would just do five with the kids from another hoods, you know, let's say. But everything was uh, just fighting, not, nothing else, you know. And then after you fight, you just give the hand. And if there was a problem, you were resolving fighting. But then because of the movie, we saw the way they were da dancing. Instead of fighting, they were dancing. So we became like in the movie, we were like, okay, why we have to fight? That's stupid. Let's see who, who dance better, you know? And that's the way we got into. Uh, so we would used to, if there was any problems, we would used to go and start dancing, you know, break dance and all that. And um, of course, later change, you know, everything to be, somebody started with knives and weapons and now look, now they kill you for anything, you know? Instead of getting into a fist fight or, you know, resolving another way, even dancing, bro. If you, but uh, now you you don't even know who's gonna just you know pull up a gun and shoot you, you know. So, so, but it was really really cool. That was my the way that I started. Then I got into other type of music. Growing up, I was used to go to the parties, and now it was not any more hip hop at the moment. It was more like Spanish rock, and then house music. Then I went to America, and I got in, into hip hop a little bit more back. And then somehow I went to a salsa place. My brother Francisco brought me. And I said, okay, I don't want to stay home. When I go and check out, I thought that it was more for older people. And when I saw all these guys dress up, you know, nice and with the girls dancing really, I was like, oh, damn, this is cool. That can be nice if I learn a little bit. Let's see, you know. And I got into it and I got hooked and look what. That got me so much that it start, we start creating our own style in, in salsa that is called Elix style, you know? Uh, oh, so we, wait, real we, quick. We, I'm sorry, I don't want to cut you off. But yeah, so so you you grew up in Guadalajara till you were 16 and then you moved to LA, is that correct? 17. 17. I, I, moved, I moved when I was 17 to America to study. Okay. One of my brothers went to America and then he brought the other one. And then the other one brought the other one. And then the other one brought me, and then me uh, and Francisco, we brought Johnny, that is the youngest one, you know, the most recognized in the salsa uh, world, you can say, in LA style, you know. He's still, he, he's, he's 40 years old right now, but uh, I, I'm uh, 47, so I'm seven years older than him. So at that moment, when I was 17, he was 10, you know, so a huge difference. Um, and... Um, I got into dancing and then, and then we brought my little brother. Somehow we just got involved. But I moved when I was 17 to study to America. But then I got into some fights and uh, and the school. You know, I I, I was um uh, I was never a fighter in a way that that I like a trouble you know maker in a way. I was always defending myself and I grew up in Mexico like that and. Um, when I moved to America and California, there was at that moment, that was when the gangs, they were pretty big. There was the drive-by shootings 
And that was when it was the Cholos, really huge in California. And there were the, the Crips and the Bloods and everything, you know. And even by just to wear something, there, a, a red color, they would just to shoot you and kill you. It was really heavy. We were used to go down and, and the, under the benches, you know, and everything at the school because there was drive-by shootings in the school. So I told my brother, damn, this is, I want to go back to Mexico. This is so bad here in America, you know. I go like, they say that Mexico is really bad, but I prefer to be economically not so good, but be, be able to live longer. And live in America, they're supposed to be, you can make money and everything, but you live every day scared and, you know, it was really, really tough. So I have to fight all the time until I said, you know, I told my brother, if, if I don't get out of the school, or well, they're going to kill me or I'm going to kill someone because I'm going to get to that point because it's too, it's too much. There's a lot of bullying, a lot of, you know, if you're alone, nobody take care of you and they can be on top of you. So a lot of the kids, they got involved with, with the gangs because they thought that it was the only way to survive. It was really, really tough. Well, a lot of the of my friends, they die by, you know, drive-by shootings, things like that. And some of them, the only people the, from the group that I would used to be around, the only people that we survived is the people that we got into dancing. There's some of the people like in Atlanta, Georgia, that is Alfredo Piseno. We were going to the same high school and everything. And it's so funny, the people that they got involved into dancing because of us, let's say after I started learning to dance, I got involved some of my friends into the dancing world. And they're the ones that it changed their lives. They have their families, they have their dance schools. And the people, my other friends that they got into gangs and all that, uh, most of them, they're dead, you know? So all right. uh, yeah, that's, that's tragic, man. So yeah. well, let me ask you this though. So, um, so I, I guess, do you start taking dance more seriously when you move to LA? Is that where you kind of like get into the LA style salsa? Like, wh- when does that come about for you? Okay, uh, when when I was in America, I, like I told you, I got into hip hop at school. There was some other kids that were like trying to dance, and you know, I always like to dance, so we were going to parties and dance, and we start creating like a small group of dancers. And uh, just for fun, you know, and uh, but then my brother Francisco, he's two years older than me. He got into into dancing because of one of his girlfriends. And he came and told me one time, you know, I've been going to dance salsa. It's a really cool dance. It's like cumbia, you know, like the way we dance in Mexico. But it, it's, it's really nice. And I don't want you to, to go to the other parties where it's hip hop and all that because there's a lot of gangs, uh, gang members there. You never know. I don't want you to, you know, just come and have fun with me, you know. And at that moment, there was a club that is, is I think it's still until this moment, in Downey, in Anaheim, in California. And it's called JC Fandango. Look. And he go like, you can come there. And we go with some of my friends. And um, I was, at that moment, I was 19, 19 years old when I started dancing. So, you, so, yeah, so you, you were 19, living in L.A. Oh, and what year was this, man? That's what year this was, man? Ooh, so there you have to that go back to that. Damn, that's like, that was a 19, I don't know, 27. Like 27, 28 years ago. So do, do you have to calculate? So hold like, on. So hold on. Nine, you were born. Nine. You were born in '73. I was born in '70. Uh, in no, in '72. I'm gonna 72? be 48 in April. So you were born in '72. So that you 72. was about. '72. Okay. So I'm 47 in April. I'm gonna be 48. April 9th. That was about nine. That was about 92. Then I guess so. You 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 going? You started learning to dance. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That was an, uh, uh, oh, you know what? Now that you mention it, yes, because I have a trophy. This, the last year that I was in Los Angeles, my brother told me, oh, remember when you won your first trophy, not in salsa, in cumbia. And that was 1992. That's at the moment that I start, but I didn't know how to dance salsa, but I was used to dance cumbia in Mexico. And there was a, a place uh, that it was called Rodolfo's. And um, 
and my brother goes like, let's go and dance. And they were like, just for fun, they were giving a trophy and uh, some drinks, a bottle or something like that. And I got in, inside and I danced and I won, you know, that, that, but I didn't know how to dance, but I was the best one at that moment, supposed to be. And because I knew how to move my body because of the break dance and all that. So when I would just to move, I would just to move more than the regular people. And the people, they like me and they clap and I got some drinks and, and the, the trophy. That they have the year 1992, exactly. Oh man, now that you mentioned the year. And that was at the moment that I, I started getting into it. Until what? like, I think 1993, that's when I really got into salsa heavy, you know? So, so hold on. So yeah, you were telling me that, you know, this, you went to this club in Anaheim and is that where you started to just social that's dance? That take classes, uh, classes at that time? No, no, no. That's the, the um, I don't know if you know, but uh, there was no instructors. I'm one of the first instructors in LA. Okay, there was somebody teaching Albert Torres. It is one of the biggest, uh, you can say, business uh, persons when it comes to salsa. He was doing uh, the LA Salsa Congress, but he died two years ago. Uh, Mr. Albert Torres is one of the biggest in the world, recognized as a promoter, you know. But he would used to teach when he was younger. And uh, after years, I find out in Santa Monica, California, you know and Laura Canelias, but they were teaching uh, cha-cha and mambo, then nobody knew what it was, no? Uh, me as a, uh, as a younger person, I got in, I saw a competition and, uh, and then it changed my life. I still remember the names of the first dancers of LA, man. You know, it was um, Chayanne, it was uh, um, Johnny, it, 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 they would just call it like that uh, to the guy, Johnny. And it was, um, uh, how they call it? Uh, the guy who won the competition that he changed my uh, my life. Anyway, so if I remember, I told you. And I saw the, that competition. I said, I want to learn to dance. You know, I got really inspired. So I was going to the club and I was like, anybody teach? Nobody was teaching because at that moment, there was not too many people dancing. The only people dancing it was people that were going to that club. Imagine California with so many millions of Latinos and nobody was teaching, nobody was creating a dance group of salsa. So when I got into it, people, they start asking me, they, I won my first um, competition in salsa. And the people, they start asking me, do you teach? And I was like, no, no. So I was working in uh, downtown Los Angeles and a regular job selling Italian suits and everything making $4.25 an hour. And, um, and I would just do, go from Long Beach, California, all the way to downtown Los Angeles. It took me like an hour and a half by, with the train, plus walking two hours and then going back four hours every day, you know? And, uh, and I would just to go dance in the evenings. And it, always the people ask me like, do you teach? And I was like, no, I'm not a dance instructor. Oh, nobody's teaching and blah, blah, blah. And one of those, of the, uh, persons that I knew at that time, he asked me, you know what, Luis, what about if I give you $100 if you teach me two moves? And I was like, what the heck? But like, he would just have money. You know? He told me, I th it teach me these two moves. And my, my wife, she loves every time that you dance with her, she loves those moves. But I don't know those moves. She's in Miami. When she goes back, I want to surprise my lady with those two moves. And I say, okay, but I don't know how to teach. Ah, you just explain the way you, you can, you know? So he came to my house. I teach him and he liked it. And then he told me, I want to learn more. So he started coming uh, once a week. And then he was like, you know what? Why you don't, uh, I'm going to bring my, my fiance and two more friends, two couples, you know? That we go out dancing. And, and, and you charge, how much you charge us for an hour for each one? And I say, okay, $10 now each one. So it was $60, $60 in one hour that I was making in my house after work. I was like, oh, cool. But then they tell me I have more friends. So at the end, I have 12 people in my small living room. We would just to move the table and I would just to make $120 uh, uh, in one hour. And I was like, shit, I make more than what I make in one day of work going all the way over there, you know? And I said, and then the guy goes like, you know what? 
Do you know how many people can come to your classes if you open a dance studio? And you look when you are innocent, if you didn't know, you go like, you know what, there's a dance studio. Every time that we get up from the highway, there's a dance studio in this area. Blah, blah, blah. Well, I'm going to take you. And he took me to the place. And I went and there was an old man. Uh, and I asked, I was like, I would love to rent your studio to give some dancing classes. How much you charge me? You're like, ah, $10 an hour, you know, for the space. So, okay. So I start there and it became one of the most popular dance studios in Los Angeles, where most of the dancers, the most famous dancers in the world, they went to learn from us there. Did you know? Uh, okay, so real quick, man, this is all amazing, but I got to ask you, man, um, I got a couple questions for you, little man. So, so right. what year did you start teaching? Was that 93, 94? That was in uh, exactly 94. Okay, so let me ask you this then, man. You, you start teaching, man. I'm, I'm very curious to hear from you. What was your beginner stage like in teaching? You know, what was it like learning to teach? Terrible, man. It was, it was so bad because you, I, I never took classes. So I didn't know how to count. I don't come from a dance background. Everything that I did in my life it was street. You know what I mean? When I did the break dancing, it was learning from what you see. Another, it was never about counting, about this, you know. So when I became an instructor, I was just telling them front, together, back. I was teaching all wrong, really bad. But that's the way you learn, like in life. When you do something, that's the way you begin, you know. And uh, then we start counting first one and two, three and four. And then we change to one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we change until we saw the people from New York uh, that they were counting one, two, three. And one of the persons, because it's a long story, we can pass hours talking about, you know. But uh, that person explained to me about the music. No, the music is, make, you know, in two bars of four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So we count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But if you don't use the four, then it's one, two, three. You hold the four, five, six, seven. You hold the eight. But if you use the four, then you go one, two, three, four, five, six. If not, I was like, shit. So I went back to Los Angeles and I started teaching. I'm the first instructor together with my brother Francisco because we were together in New York, teaching one, two, three, five, six, seven in Los Angeles. And when I went back to my studio and I told the student, listen, I've been teaching all wrong. Now I'm going to teach you this way. After imagine teaching for a couple of years, they're like, oh, no. But uh, that's the way we start, you know. And um, so it, I didn't know how to teach, but the inspiration, the, the drive to, to do something, man, it make you do incredible things. That's the way. There was no style defined in Los Angeles. They call it the LA style because of the Vasquez brothers of us, my brother John and my brother Francisco. Even there are some great dancers, Alda Silva, Rogelio Moreno, Josi Neglia, my ex-wife, Joby, that is one of the creators of the... There was no style defined, but we give that shape to the style in Los Angeles because it was not the way you dance it right now. Before, you were used to dance more like cumbia style, back, a little bit front, one turn. There was nothing specific, you know, Defined and we were young, we were mixing, I was mixing moves of break dancing on the floor, do, doing crazy stuff. And that's when the people they saw us in the first World Salsa Congress ever created, that's when it became the explosion. That is every single event that exists all over the world is because of the first World Salsa Congress in Puerto Rico that it created all this revolution. And some of the best dancers that you admire in the world. They got inspired by other one, the other dancers who came from us, or they somehow they were involved into that uh, event, you know. So I understand then, that. That's what we were became an in, in instructor. Then I, I started learning, seeing the way they were teaching, like in ballroom and other places, because we start, okay, we do a new step, we need to call it a name, so we start, okay, the slide, okay, three plus three, we're gonna do this, the cross uh, cross body lead, it was already. Um, part of the dancing world and ballroom, you know? Uh, Copa, it comes from New York. The people from New York, they call it the Copa. Susie Q, it was already, you know that? Uh, but a lot of the steps that we start, we start putting uh, ourselves the names, 
you know, and that's the way it became popular all over the world. The way we were teaching, everybody started teaching. And now even with the years, you learn new techniques because it evolves always. is changing the dancing world, you know. Let me ask you this real quick, man. So you said you, said you the Vasquez brothers, are the creators of L.A. style. I, I hope I'm saying that proper. Let me ask you, man. Um, I guess, so what are the original influences for, I guess, L.A. style salsa then? Well, like I told you, there was no, there was no um, style of dancing. You know what I mean? Let's say um, we saw the dancers at that time. These dancers, they don't dance anymore. They don't. Some of them, they die already. They, they are. They were okay. I was 19 years old. They were already like 30. You know what I mean? So if I'm uh, if I'm uh, 57, they're like 67, almost 70 years old. You know. Uh, no, 47, they're 50, yeah, they're almost 60, or on, on their 60. But um, they they were dancing, and we were looking at them, and they were already doing, you know, their stairs, they were dressing up very nice. And after you learn, you realize that there was not much. When you're learning, you think that everything is a lot, you know, like, wow. And then when you learn, you go like, oh, it's getting boring. After, like, the students, they learn. You know, you want more and more. So then you realize that what we knew, it was almost nothing. That's when we start creating new stuff, you know. And as a young kid, you you always get inspired somehow to, to do new stuff. And and nobody was calling Alice style. They were just calling salsa or cumbia, you know. When we start traveling, the Vasquez brothers, because we were the first ones who got out of from America to uh, export this... Um, uh, this dance, you know, and import somehow some ideas and everything too from other places. So if you go to France, Germany, uh, Holland, uh, uh, Russia, any place, they're going to talk about the Vasquez. We were the first ones ever there. So that, that's when the people, they got into the LA style. A lot of the instructors like Leon Rose, uh, Super Mario, uh, Tropical Jam, uh, um, Fernando Sosa, all of those, they come from us. They were our students, you know what I mean? They came and now they're the ones who are changing. Uh, the world, it means almost any dancers from New York. At that time, there was only a few dancers that they were representing somehow New York. There was Nelson Flores, Ismael hey. Otero. There was no groups, you know? Well, I, yeah, I'm, I'm very curious, man. So um, so you start teaching in, um, in you know, 93, and, you know, I guess what changes for you, man? Like, do you, you know, you start teaching classes, you get kind of popular, man. How does... Uh, I guess what changes like what makes you start taking it more see does it do you just start getting more popular like what happens for you well everything is start i wasn't thinking about making money or things like that i was enjoying my life it was really nice to dance make friends go into a very nice environment of uh of friendship uh just to socialize you know as a young kid and not just that, lots of girls, you know, that you become uh, popular and damn, you know, you, I was, there was girls left and right. I mean, it was like, because you can dance and everything, whoa, forget it. So nice atmosphere, you know, and then um, when I get into teaching, I realized that I really enjoy teaching. And, and I said, if I teach, there's going to be more dancers. We need more dancers in the community so we can grow more. We're going to have more places to dance, more DJs, more uh, dance orchestras, because, you know, there was uh, growing at that moment the uh, live music too. And, uh, and, I, and I love it. So I was the first instructor. It became so freaking popular that I was teaching in one class 120 people at the studio. Can you believe it? And then... Uh, it grows so much that my brother saw that I was making lots of money because I quit my regular job, you know. And then he started teaching in the same studio and downstairs in the other floor. And he became an instructor. And then some of our friends that they were dancing always with us, they became instructors too because they saw an opportunity to create their own groups because I create the first salsa dance group ever that exists in California is Salsa Brava. That it was one of the most famous dance groups in the world at that time, all the way to 2004, when we dissolved the group. 
We started in 2004 and we dissolved in, in 1994 and we dissolved in 2004. We were 10 years with the group and uh, I had 21 dancers, different nationalities from uh, Cuba, from uh, Puerto Rico. From uh, Japan, can you believe it? They were coming all the way from Japan, Australia, to audition to our dance company. Because at that moment, we were traveling all over the world, you know? It means we start getting jobs left, uh, left and right because salsa start becoming, it became really popular at that moment. Jennifer Lopez started becoming popular, Enrique Iglesias, uh, uh, Shakira, uh, uh, Ricky Martin, all those. They start becoming later, you know? But at the, at the beginning, the Latino music started becoming more popular at that time. There was a time that there was the black music. It was more hip hop and all that. And then it became somehow the Latino music. It was like the, the Latino moment, you know? And I, I started that shit at the right moment, at the right place. It means things that you don't plan. And then um, it, it just changed my life. When I created the dance group, people start calling me for like, for television. Oh, when I met Tony Basso, she got me into television and I started getting so many jobs. So we became even more popular yes. in the United States. So people who saw those programs in other places, I got um, uh, emails and everything. They say, I saw you dancing, let's say in, in uh, Washington, you know, in Nebraska or this. And I saw the program and they put my phone number. So they contact me. I want to learn to dance. And I was like, Chad, do you need to come all the way from Los Angeles? So some of those, they got inspired doing those television programs because I work with Simbad. You know Simbad? You know Simbad in definitely. America? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Well, I worked with him, you know, in and, uh, and a show that was called uh, Vibe. It was a, a national. He was bringing Madonna, Michael Jackson. Every, uh, he got uh, Prince there. I met so many of the artists in that program because it was a big, he had a Snoop Doggy Dog, you know, it was like, so he, I would just teach him to dance to his girlfriend and his girlfriend is the one who connect me with him. But like, I told my boy, they present me, I was like, oh, who's this guy, you know? Somebody told me, hey, you don't know him. He's, you know, but who cares? So every time that there was like, we were, they were going to commercials. It was a few seconds that we were dancing with him. He was doing comedy, you know? He, they, he introduced me with Jennifer Lopez. That's the way I met Jennifer Lopez and I worked with Jennifer Lopez and everything, you know? So it was uh, really cool. So a lot of people, because they saw some television, we became even bigger. So when we start traveling to Europe, they were bringing us, they weren't introducing us like the dancers from Jennifer Lopez or the dancers from the movie Dance With Me because in 1998 we did the movie Dance With Me with Vanessa Williams and Cheyenne. And they were introducing us like that, you know? Oh, the dancers from LA, from LA. So people, they start calling the style, the Vasquez brother style, you know? And we told them, no, that's not the way you can call the style. They say, so how you call it? We were like, salsa. They say, no, but you, the Vasquez say, no, there's Josie Negla, Rogelio Moreno, uh, Alex Da Silva, all these dancers that they, they need the credit to, you know, because it's not just us. What happened, lots of them, they don't dance. Some of them, they still dance in. Some of them, they don't travel anymore, you know? And, and I said, no, so they start, they call it to Hollywood style. And then somehow, because we were wearing always shirts like this, it says LA or something, people start calling it LA and that's the way it became, because in New York, they call it mambo or salsa. And then people start calling all the people from New York, New York style. And the people from LA, they're LA style. And that's the way it became LA, New York. No, the style, the, the people, they start calling it like that. But at the beginning, there was like baskets. We say no, no, no. But let me ask you this real quick, man. Um, and, and I think I might know the answer to this, but I would love to hear your opinion, man. You know, in your opinion, what is the difference between LA style and New York style? Is it just the way you interpret the music, the way you hear it, and how how are they different? Look, it's very similar. That's the cool thing. Uh, we dance in line dance. It's the same. Just the timing. And of course, there's uh, the style it represents, you know, uh, depends how you move. Like dancing you know, or hip hop or, you know, uh, depends what you dance. You can see locking, popping. It means you can see the style. Even all somehow it comes from the same thing from the beginning, no? Uh, salsa is the same. LA style, New York style is very similar. 
The only thing is the difference, the interpretation that you give to the music and um, depends how you move your, your body and everything. But the style is the same, line dance, nothing changed, only the tempo, stepping on the one or stepping on, on two, you know? Because remember, a long time ago on two was four, dancing in couples four, one, two. It's not like back one, two, five, six, no. It's, it was forward. That was the old school way, uh, Puerto Rico style. And then everybody became really into Eddie Torres and he became very popular to step back one, two, five, six. And that's when he became really popular, you know? So, but uh, it's, it's very similar. It's not much, very big difference between LA, New York, Cuban or Colombian. The only ones that can relate a lot is LA and New York. Right, like right. West Coast Swing and East Coast Swing and West Coast Swing. It's very oh. similar. Yeah. So you've been since so much, you know, throughout your life, man. I'm very curious, man. Answer me this. Mm -hmm. What are some lessons that you've learned from dancing that you're able to translate to your everyday life? Dance, you learn to socialize and you learn to make new friends. You learn to be more aware of that it's not just you, it's the other person. It's almost like dancing. When you dance, you want to please the, the person that is dancing with you. You want her to finish half um, and that she, that she wants to ask you again or that you can ask her and she can say yes again because she was happy dancing with you. You're thinking not just about you, you know, it's almost like sex. Always the girl first, you know. I always tell my students that, uh, that we always have to think on the girls. The girls are the, the pictures, we are the frame, you know? And it's super important when we dance, to dance to the level of the person, never try to be more or try to show off. This is about having fun. And that's one of the things that I, until now I still enjoy is having fun. That's one of the things that a lot of people forget to have fun. So um, always put in my head in every day's life is when I'm going to dance, to have fun. That's what I learned from dancing it, since I was a little kid. That I can make new friends and, um, and that you forget for a moment all the stress. That you, whatever that you is going bad for a couple of hours is gone. And when you go back, you see life in a different way. Maybe you're going to see the different spirit. Like, ah, okay, I can resolve this. You know what I mean? Because sometimes we, after work or something, we just go back home and we start thinking so much about the problems and everything. But dancing, it makes you forget. And that, that, now I understand why in so many countries in Africa and Latin America, dancing is super important when it comes to poverty and everything, you know? So your life, or it can help you, or, it can, or that you, you can change somebody's people's life. The same way that, he, that the dancing changing as an instructor, every day I try to this lesson in my head, like, okay, I have to go and teach, you know, inspire somebody, you know? I guess you definitely understand. I understand that, man. Um, I guess, so at this point, man, I kind of want to, I kind of want to give some value to, uh, to people, to, to other dancers out there, if you get what I'm saying, man. So I want to ask you just for like sort for some hints and tips for other dancers, okay? Okay. So let me ask you this, man. For um, for a beginner who feels like they're stuck in a rut, like they're not getting better, what words of wisdom could you offer them? No, there's always. Now I can tell almost anybody. Don't complain too much. There's so many resources where to learn from. Now there's YouTube, there's instructors, there's clubs, there's online classes, there's uh, everything. Not like before, we didn't have anything. Before the only way to learn it was, it was to share uh, VHS tape, the big ones, and send it. You don't even know if I told you the story, like I told you, I can, somebody go like, why well, you don't write a book about this? Right now, the people, they have a very easy, all they have to do is one people that they learn from YouTube. Of course, the best way is to go with an instructor. If you're not happy with an instructor, move on and go with another one. It's almost like a relationship. You cannot stay with somebody that the relationship is toxic or you are not, is not bringing anything good for your life. Leave that person and find another one. It's the same as a, 
as a student, don't feel like that now. But at the end, you have the power because as an instructor, I can give you as much as I can and inspire you. But if you don't, you don't put it in your in your in your brain and go and work it out. Try the move way to do it. You know, uh, practice practice makes perfect. And and um, but the most important, don't ever forget that when you go on the dance floor, it's about having fun. And even if you know you can ask any girl in the world traveling, they prefer to dance with a person who knows how to lead good, even five moves, four moves. But you do it well, and the girl's going to be happy dancing with you. Then doing 50 moves when you're twisting the arms, and you don't know what you're doing. Feel the music. The girl's going to feel that. And it's, uh, it's going to be like, wow. This, guy, yeah. this is trying to do everything to make me feel good. And, you know, he leads me. Even if he repeats the same. So practice makes perfect. Practice, 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 dance, dance, dance. Have fun, have fun. And never, even if you learn and you become in advance, remember when you were a beginner and try to help other people. Never just dance um, or never uh, somebody else they talk or something. Always inspire them. Make them feel good because remember that you were there. And always in the night go and dance with people that nobody want to dance with. The old person, the fat person, or overweight person, the one that is completely a beginner because that person is going to remember you one day and if that person becomes good or something, that person is going to be always saying, thank you. I remember when you danced with me. The same way that they're going to remember you if you are an asshole, you know? I, mean, like, I remember when you didn't want to dance with me, when you make the face, when you left me in the middle of the dance floor. That happened to me and my brothers, you know? So always remember when you were a beginner and then help other ones. But anybody can learn if you really want to. Of course, there's some exceptions. Even if you try but one in a million, they uh, they can learn really, really slow and it's going to take many, many years to learn. Some of the ones just a few months, a few years, and they become really good. So anybody can do it, man. You just have to want it. That's it. Yeah, no, definitely, bro. I definitely understand that. Let me, let me ask you this, man. For for someone who is an intermediate dancer and they want to get to that advanced level, what does it take for them? Um... It's because everything is the same. What you have to do is go with instructors that they inspire you, that they, you go and you are happy going to that class. Um, that, um, that you know that in the intermediate level is when it's supposed to be, now you need to be already dancing comfort, comfortable most of the dance that you do. And that's when we realize, you see little by little when the girls, they come and start asking, and they repeat, and they come again. And you're like, oh, shit, I'm improving. And sometimes the people, they don't say it. Or sometimes people, they come, and they see the difference. When you were a beginner, and they tell you, wow, you were dancing so much better. That's already a plus. It means you're improving your dancing. You know what I mean? Video, uh, videotape, uh, record yourself, too, when you're dancing a while. And then you watch the videos to see yourself. What can you improve or not? Because the, the judge that is... The best judge to judge you is yourself. I mean, because he's like, oh man, I don't look so good here. And that. Well, then improve it, you know, but um, it, it doesn't matter, beginner, intermediate, even supposed to be advanced. You always learn. Remember one thing, that you always can learn something new. You never stop learning. Exactly. That's so true, man. Let me let me ask you this real quick, man. Um. When I say the word musicality, what does that mean to you? Interpret the music, but on your own way. Because one of the things that people think that you have to hit every accent of the music and, and no, no, no. Um, it's almost like, <laughs> it sounds funny, like having sex. Nobody can tell you, oh, this is the best way. If you do it like this, oh, they love it. It's like, no, maybe that girl that was with you, love it. This one doesn't like it like this. She likes to be more touched like this. And so everybody's different. So you, the best to interpret the music is on your own way. The only way, because when we start dancing, people, they start criticizing us. You know, they say, that's not salsa, because we were young. We weren't, like I told you, I was mixing break dancing. Everything is like, that's not salsa, blah, blah, blah. All the traditional 
dancers at that time. But then we saw the new generation go like, fuck, we like this more than the other one because the other one was the old school, you know? And, and we saw the, a lot of guys involved into the dancing world. So we were like, so it means that whatever we are doing is fine, that there's going to be some people that they don't like it or they are disappointed with whatever we're doing. That's normal life. You're never going to be, not even Michael Jackson, not, a, not all my friends, they thought that he was the best. Some of them, they were like, ah, that guy sucks. And, you know, each one seeing it in a different way. It doesn't mean to, <laughs> that they don't know anything. It's just, so when you interpret it and you move your body, move it on your own way, did you hear the music? Because somebody else, if he hears the same song, he's going to interpret it in a different way. You know what I mean? But pay attention to the music. Pay attention when you dance to the music, to the accents, to the changes. When is a good t- to start slow? When is a good time to go faster? When is a good time to to make, to let go, to do some freestyle? When is always you start from the beginning and you end it. Always end the song. Ta-da-da, if with the beat, with the, with anything, and always the same way that you dance, bring her back. Whatever you ask her is a good way. You don't have to, but at least say thank you. A lot of people now, they don't even say that, you know, in some places. So, but, uh, yeah, that's that's what I, what I think, you know. <laughs> that's perfect, man. That's perfect. Um, and I want to ask you just one final question before, before we wrap this up, man. One last question for you. Can you give me one tip that can make anyone a better dancer immediately? Immediately, be freaking nice. That's the best advice that I can give you. You want to be a better dancer? Be nice to anybody. Because being nice, at the moment that you start dancing, you can be a badass dancer, but you have an attitude. And the first thing that the girl is going to be like, wow, such a good dancer. And he sucks. He's so arrogant or this. The best from the moment that you're nice, you improve already your dance and your personality and everything. From that moment, the people, they're going to start liking you. From the moment that I teach my classes, the people, when they come, I say, I have to be nice. They're paying for the class. I have to make them feel like, you know, like when you go to eat to a restaurant, they give you good service. What you do? They give extra tips. You do it because it's a service, but you do it because you want to. And when you're naturally like, like I always say, I always saw my mom so friendly. I learned that from, from my mom. So as an instructor, I pass it to my students so they can be nice like me. So if some of them, they become instructors or they just go and socialize, they learn that the same way that the instructor is, they imitate. They're like your kids, bro. But I promise you, after so many years teaching, you can create monsters. That's why the instructors that they talk, oh, don't dance on one or or don't dance on two, or don't dance this, or don't dance bachata like this. Those are the ones uh, uh, that are insecure. The people that are secure, you never, you're just gonna say, go and dance. This is what I know, and this is what I'm teaching you. But there's different ways to dance than interpret. It's like interpretation of music. Nobody can come to tell you, no, this is the best way to interpret the music. No, that's you. So it's exactly like, it's like nobody can tell you how to do it. Don't ever believe that shit. Be yourself. You're going to learn with the time and with the experience. But always be around people who dance good. Uh, my mom would just say, be around successful people and you're going to be success- successful. Be around losers and you're going to finish. And it is true. It sounds strong. They say not everybody. But if you are with gangsters and everything, even if you don't do drugs, somehow you know that the police can come and you can be right away. They're going to think the same. Or you're gonna get into trouble because they always get into trouble. So in the dancing world, if you are around people with nice attitude, people that have the mentality to always improve their dance, it's gonna push you to learn more. If you are around people that they don't care, they're in their own world, you're gonna become somehow like that. And that's why we inspire so many people because they were around us, you know what I mean? And then when we met the people from New York, from other ones, it was like a challenge, like a like a battle between LA and New York in a good way. And we were like, shit, we need to choreograph this better this year. You know, you need that kind of a of challenge and that kind of, a, um, a, I don't know how you can call 
like a healthy competition. You know, it's it's like in a competition in a good way, even between our, the brothers, the three brothers. Like I told you, I created the first group and then inspired my brother to create his second group. That it was the second. It was Los Rumberos. That until now he still have it, Los Angeles. And then Rogelio Moreno. So you inspired the same way that somebody inspired me when I saw the movie Break Dance. And I saw those dancers and I said, I want to learn break dance like that. So it's a, uh, it, you have to be very, very careful uh, with what you do. But to learn fast, just be nice first. And everything else is in you how much you work, how much you want. It's like a six pack. You have a, you want a six pack? It's not just to do the exercises, to eat well, to sleep well. So it means there's lots of that you go to and have the right equipment, that you do the right exercises, the right repetition. You want a six pack? It doesn't come from just from nothing. Plus another one. Some people, they don't need to work out that much. They have already, it comes in the genes, you know, it comes already that they have a structure of the body or something. Some people, they struggle more. So you have to work it out on your own way. And to become better, uh, everything depends in you and it depends the people that are around so uh, just you want to do it fast go and dance more go to a lot of dance events you're going to get inspiration there you're going to inspire and you're going to learn more never stop learning try to take some classes you always learn something one little thing you can be like shit i've been doing this thing wrong for 20 years i thought that it was like this and now this guy just playing is like wow nobody told me about this little detail but twisting the hand like this. That's why I was twisting over my shoulder. It means you always learn something, man. Always. That's so true, man. That's so true. I want to, um, I guess at this point, man, uh, Mr. Vasquez, because I want to, you know, thank you for taking time to talk to me, man. Nah, my pleasure, man. It's a, that's, one of, that's another thing. With the time, um, I tried to... I don't have, um, uh, I don't really use much, I'm not the kind of a person, um, I like to keep it always more now, but I have so many people, I just talked like a couple of days ago with uh, somebody, a guy who lives in France, he's from Mexico, he wrote to me, you know, I admire you and your brothers, and he started learning, and he became so good, but he still, you know, I want to go and take class from you, I want to move close where you live. I live in France right now. I want to live uh, close to in Sweden. How's the life there? He started asking me, you know, and he started even telling me about problems with his girlfriend that lives in, in Texas and he started crying. It means, and he was like, you know why I'm talking to you? Because since the first time that I talked to you, you make me feel really welcome that I can talk to you. When, when with another people, other instructors, they never have time for anything. If I write to them, they never write to me or they never, or they write to me months after, after, but you are the first one who answered me from all the instructors that I've been contacting and the one that he makes me feel really comfortable to talk, you know. And I said, brother, anytime I know how it feels to be alone in, in France, you know, I moved to Europe being alone too. It means there's many things I go like, and we always need help. You, we never know when I'm going to need help from somebody. And the nicest thing that I learned from my mom is she told me, you have the power to create friends or enemies what do you want friends or en friends so then be nice and you're going to see how many people and remember everything that you do in life good or bad it goes back to you what goes around comes around and one day it's going to get you so if you want to be be nice with your students be nice with your friends be nice with your family with your brothers with your sister, and your life is going to go much easier and every time that i've been needed uh, that i need something from somebody there's always somebody and they always remind me you know why I did it, Luis? Because I remember when you did this for me, and I was like, really? Hello? Like 10 years ago, you gave me this advice. Blah, blah. And I never forget. Thank you. So I was like, oh, man. So um, it's, been, the, it, it's, it's for me to do it. With the I know you or people that are not going to lose this time, but for me, it's a pleasure, especially asking things that is from the past, because a lot of people now they dance. They don't know anything about the past. Here in Europe, we're having in a few events salsa history classes. That is not about dancing; it's to sit and to talk about this because a lot of the people they don't even know where the style is coming from, 
why this move, why that. They just see the new generations, but they don't know what's going on behind. And they're becoming so freaking big, these classes here, because a lot of the people they want to learn to teach, they go like, but I want to know the history too, not just the moves. But I want to know when this, my students, they ask me about things I know already to, what to talk about, you know? So um, for me, it's a pleasure, brother. And real quick, man, I, I don't want to, I would be, you know, remiss if I didn't give you the opportunity to speak on, um, you know, you moving to Sweden and Love Dance Academy, man. Tell me about that real quick, if you don't mind. Well, uh, I, I was living in California for 18 years. I was married. I got divorced. In 2004, I dissolved the group from uh, Salsa Brava. And in 2006, I moved to Europe. I was coming only for one year because I was traveling from Los Angeles almost every weekend to Europe or to Asia and going back after three days, going back, teach there. Next weekend, you know, I did 157 countries already at this time. Some of those I've been repeating two, three, some of those 20 times because every year I've been coming like to Sweden since I was in Los Angeles. I've been coming since 1999 here. So it's 21 years that I'm coming to Sweden, you know? So I moved to, after my divorce, to, to Switzerland for six months. I was going there to stay for six months and I was gonna go back to Los Angeles, but I really liked it because I always enjoyed uh, Europe every time that I was here. And then I moved to Italy, uh, to Milan for two years. And then I moved for two and a half years to Rome in Italy. Then I met my fiance, and now I've been living here for the last almost uh, for the last ten years. Um, so it's I just finished because of my fiance. I met her, and I moved from Italy here. We have a son that is uh is going to be nine years old um, uh, tomorrow, um, and and I have a daughter in America that is twenty four years old from California with my ex dance uh, partner and ex wife. Jovi, Jovi, Jovi Brava, that she still dancing, but not as much, you know, but she was one of the first persons who changed the salsa world and the female world, you know, the styling and everything. But, and um, it had to be something, there's something happened in this side of the world that I have to go back to America. But uh, I really like Europe. I like the style of life. Everything is more relaxed. Uh, the, they can call it socialist. Socialist, but it's freaking amazing. You don't pay for for school here, you know, like my until he finished the university and everything. The health insurance, everything is for free, you know. Um, the government help you if you, your woman gets pregnant. It, crime is one of the lowest in the world, you know. It means everything is so it's more relaxed here than than in California. And when I was there last year. Everything I say, oh no, I don't go back just for vacation or something. About, tell me about uh, Love Dance Academy, man, real quick, please. Well, it's um, it's a dance school that I created uh, like after six months that I moved uh, to Sweden. I was gonna stay here for a year and then I was gonna go back to Italy, but my fiance uh, told me let's stay a little bit longer because you know she have the family here. And uh, and with the baby, I say, okay, I can stay a little bit longer until my son, you know, grows up a little bit more. And then I get used to it. So I create the dance school and I start with like five students, like going back the memory of 1994 yeah. when I started uh, teaching. It was the same memory. People, they go like, what are you doing? And I live in Malmö, Malmö Sweden. It's in the south, in the border of Denmark, uh, Copenhagen, and it's a small city with 300,000 people, and almost nobody knew anything about me because it was only Cuban style here. So when I moved here, I started with five people that they knew me from YouTube, you know, and and I started the school, and now it's one of the biggest dance school when it comes to salsa in um, in in, the, in in Malmo. You can say in the well in the south, really. You can call it. When it comes to salsa, line dance, LA yeah. star, I teach bachata. I, I know how to dance on two, New York and everything. I dance cha cha, you know. I'm learning kizomba. I can learn yeah, yeah, more kizomba yeah. and everything. Uh, but, I love um, kizomba. 
Oh, it's really nice. It means I've done, I've just started learning the basics, but I love it because every time that I go to an event, they ask me to dance. If I go to the Kisomba room and I feel so bad because I don't know how to dance, you know, and they, even the girls, they tell me, ah, but you're really good faking it, you know, <laughs> you go like, you're really good somehow. If you learn some classes, you're going to learn really fast because you dance already, you know, so I don't know. I mean, I think I'm going to learn to dance a little bit of Kisomba, but, and now my fiance, we, um, I have um, other instructors teaching with me in the dance school today so that's awesome man that's awesome i, I don't want to hold you up too much longer man so so tell me real quick Luis. um you know what are some of your upcoming events you know what do you have going on in your life what do you want to plug well uh, in life i want another child my last one because i'm getting older and my fiance is younger than me you know she's 34 years old and I'm, uh, you know, 40 cents. So um, I want uh, the last child. She won another, uh, I hope, you know, she can get pregnant this year and everything. Um, my life is, everything is surrounded with dancing. So if I, I, I still teaching, you know, I still, it means my, the way that I dance, the way when the people see me like, if I, if you don't, if you don't say your age, we think that you're 35. It means like you have so much energy. The way you dance, the way you, I'm like thank God, like my mom, you know. So I see myself uh, still having a dance school, if not uh, having some dance projects. I'm always doing something. I, I work as an MC, you know. The the last eight years, I I work as an MC. I'm one of the most recognized. We're three MCs that we're really recognized in Europe. We get all the jobs, so I can work every single week or even twice a week in different countries if I want to, but it's too much. So I, the only way that my fiance told me that she can be with me in, in that relationship is if I travel only twice a month. It means one week yes, one week no, depends, you know? So that's what I'm trying to do because in January, I travel three times, but it's okay because at that time, I, we don't have the school. We open at the end of January. So I went to Singapore, then I went to um, Bosnia, and then I went to Amsterdam. Now I rest last week, this week, and now on Friday, I'm leaving to, um, to Germany for the Eurodance Festival. And like that, every other week, I, have, I accept only 20, 24 to 25 job, jobs a year, weekends. So I'm already full. I have already for two, 2000. 21 already half of the calendar of school and this is what i have been doing for of my of my life man traveling that's where i make most of my money half of my money that i make is traveling i don't need to do anything they just contact me like after so many years everybody knows so the same way that you contact me they contact me events i go every year they i repeat and this is my life teaching dancing and you know working as an mc and always doing new projects like with these girls that are doing a performance with students and the but the most important is I want to keep doing a being a good father with my son because with my daughter in America I was so young when I got uh, you know when my daughter was born I was 23 years old and um in the I think because I became so popular so fast, you know, you're going to a new world that I tried to pay attention to my daughter and everything, but it was so much work in Japan. Even she was traveling with me, you know, she's been traveling at least to 40 countries in, in, since she was with me, you know, my daughter. She comes here to Europe uh, once or twice a year, but um, it really affects somehow. You love so much dancing, and sometimes it's really to divide it with your family and everything. That's why this time, like my fiance said, if you do it twice a month, it's fine. But you cannot do it every weekend because then your job becomes more important and your son is not going to grow up seeing you much because you're traveling all the time. And when you come here, you have to work at the school. And, and she's right. So um, my life now as an adult is more balanced than when I was younger. Younger, I was more crazy. Everything. So now the most important is my family than anything else. can stop dancing or leave everything behind as my family. Nothing else. Yeah, I understand that. that. Yeah, I definitely understand that, Luis. And, and real quick, last question, man. Um, how can people get in contact with you, man? How can they reach out to you? 
But uh, like I told you, I'm not uh, into the social media much. I have only Facebook, you know, um, my WhatsApp, my email, the website for the school, things like that. But um, uh, Facebook is the best, you know, is the, uh, is, is the, the, I don't even have many pages. Like my brother Francisco have like three or four most of the dancers, and when you write to them to one, they never answer, they always answer to the one that is the most important. So I don't even know why they have so many. You know, I've been having one, for I don't know how many years, uh, 12 or something. Uh, I got to 5,000 friends, and I cannot allow, it. I have like 5,000 and waiting list <laughs> for, and somebody told me, why you don't get another one? I said, no, if I cannot handle one, and I imagine with two, it's like to be married with two, Wives, you know, it's better just to have one, otherwise it's too much trouble. And uh, and it's easy for me, like you, for me to talk to you, to contact you, because when you write to me and everything is easier than having too many pages. Um, and and that's it. Contact me, Luis Vasquez on Facebook with, with a set in the in the middle and set at the end, you know, uh, Vasquez, and and that's it. Uh, anybody who wants to write to me, even just to say hi, or I always, always answer every freaking message that I get. Boom. You know, I always answer. Yeah, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. And I mean, yeah, it is true. I wrote you, man. You hit me right back, man. So I really appreciate that, Luis. You're welcome, brother. And, hey. uh, it's been a pleasure. And if one day you are in Europe or something, if you come, my house is your house, brother, here. You always have a friend here. Uh, okay. I really appreciate that, man. Thank you so much. Um, I think this is a wonderful way to wrap up this episode of the Two Left Feet Podcast. Thank you so much, Mr. Vasquez. Bless you, brother. All right. Hey, have a really yeah. wonderful day. You as right. well. Take care. Ch- Bye. Ciao. <laughs> Ciao. That's all it is. Hey everyone, uh, if you made it this far to all the end of the video, I want to thank you so much. Um, my overall goal with making these interviews and these episodes is uh, to give a voice to dancers, you know, to give them a platform to speak their story. So uh, if this is of value to anyone, then that, that means the world to me. Um, my overall goal is to give value to the dance community. So, if you find no value in this, then I I urge you to please let me know where I can improve on. Um, I I truly want to, you know, just uh, give value and content to to the dance community. Um, So, please let me know how I can improve, where I'm messing up, because to be 100% honest with you, um, you know, I'm learning along the way as I do this. I, I truly am. So um, to be able to interact with you know the dance community, it means the world to me because it it gives me feedback and it lets me know you know what I'm doing right, where I can improve upon, um, you know what I'm doing wrong, which I feel like might maybe more important. Um, so please, if you all could could comment and just let me know what you think, it, it means the world to me because you know that feedback just helps me improve. So. Um, Please comment uh, as well, you know, please like and subscribe. That means a lot as well. Um, but, you know, I, I want to say thank you so much for for just watching this because it means the world to me. Um, you know, I want to I wanna take you on this journey of the Two Left Feet Podcast. You know, I'm, I'm very excited for it. So, once again, thank you so much.